Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Trevor Stockwell, and I'm pleased to have the opportunity to chat with our guest today, Tracy Brinkman. He's known as the Dark Horse Entrepreneur. More about that shortly. So whether you want to kickstart your entrepreneurial game, or whether you want to shift gears and step it up a bit, or maybe you're taking stock of where you are and looking to restart business activities, listen closely to the insight Tracy will share with us today, because it's gleaned from his wealth of experience in business. He has a background in marketing for some of the finest companies in corporate America, and he's now a business and success coach. Always good to listen to a coach. And he also hosts a podcast to help entrepreneurs. So welcome, Tracy Brinkman. Hey, thank you so much. So I'm glad to, glad to be here. Thank you for having me on. No, it's great. I'm looking forward to chatting with you today. So maybe before we jump into all those things and dig in a bit more, so you, you run the Dark Horse Schooling website. Um, right. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what brought you to that name? You know, uh, across the course of my life, uh, my mom and dad, God love them. They, uh, they were always one of those, those folks that said, you can do it if you put your mind to it, right? Which was a great start for any youngster out there. Uh, but uh, you know, usually once you stepped out the door of my home, not everyone else in my, even in my inner circle were like, are you sure you want to do that? You know? And, and I think a lot of times they, they, they have great intentions in mind. You know, they don't want to see you get hurt or see you fail or anything like that. But I was one of those guys. I was always, I was always hustling. And I mean that in a great, sense from a young age. And I can remember being in elementary school, we had a machine that would dispense pencils. You'd put a nickel in, you'd get a pencil or two. And so I would, you know, put a nickel in and get a couple of pencils. And in class, if someone needed a pencil, I'm like, here, it's a quarter, right? You know, <laughs> supply and demand, right? They couldn't leave the class to go get a pencil. Um, and then later in, uh, you know, in my uh, middle and high school uh, times, I got into drawing and my dad being in the military, you know, I would draw these amazing, I say amazing, uh, tank scenes, battle scenes. And I got into uh, birds of prey and then kids were like, Oh, could you draw me that? So I started selling those. And then later on, I got into cars with uh, a gentleman I've called brother until he passed away a few years ago. Um, I got into you know the stereos and the paint schemes, and he was the engine guy. And so people are like, "Oh, could you paint my car?" Sure, eight hundred bucks, you know. And it was just so from from day one, I think that entrepreneurial spirit was within me. But as I went through life, you know, you hit those bumps in the road and you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. You know, the, the ups and downs that come with, you know, being in business or, or just running your own entrepreneurial game uh, come across, you know, like, uh, you know, I, I fell into the drug scene uh, and I fell way deep into the drug scene. Unfortunately, I came out of the military. I served six years myself and I started a little programming company in Southern California right at the the edge of the dot-com boom, right? When everything was just starting to turn to computers. And uh, so this is really the first time, and I was probably early 20s, that I had serious money in my pocket. Uh, and in Southern California, you can come across some of the wrong types of people, especially we're talking, you know, the early 90s when speed and cocaine was blowing up in that, in that time frame. And that became, uh, you know, an, an addiction of mine. At first, it was like, cool, I can stay up longer and get more programming done. And then it turned into a real addiction to the point where I was selling it to feed the habit. And I was recruiting others to do the same. And uh, you know, unfortunately, I learned how to manage people as a result of that. Not a good lesson, but a good lesson. Um, but, and, to, and it got to the point where the police kicked open my door. Now, luckily, I was not there when they kicked open my door. But when I got to my condo, it's like, you're looking around. It was just like in the movies, right? The furniture is tossed everywhere. The mashed potatoes are tossed on the floor as they're looking for things. And uh, that was, you know, that was an awakening moment. It's like, uh, whoa, is this the road I really want to travel? And for me, I had a four-month-old daughter 
when this happened. And that was really, it was like, oh my God, this isn't just me anymore. It's not me being selfish and partying. I'm impacting this young life. So uh, with the help of my brother again and my parents, God love them, uh, I was able to clean up my act. I didn't go to a rehab. I just literally said, mom, dad, could you keep an eye on my daughter while I pretty much sleep off these drugs? Um, and, uh, you know, they, they helped me out and, you know, they, they were really, uh, every step of the way, always there. So, uh, and, and coming out of that really, I think one of the things a lot of folks don't, um, think of until they've gone through some sort of addiction, be it drugs or alcohol or, or anything for that matter, is that when you try to set yourself on the right path, you've taken this kick to the head. And I mean this in, a, in a, more of an emotional sense, right? You're, you're not feeling so good about yourself. Your self-confidence is, is down. So I could have stepped right out there and started doing programming and everything, but I didn't feel worthy. So I started doing, you know, day jobs, or, you know, doing being a file clerk and doing some accounting things and even warehouse jobs just to build my self-confidence back up. And, and it got to the point where, okay, okay now I, I feel good about doing this. I stepped back out and I landed a role at the Coca-Cola company and that started my uh, rise in corporate America. So, you know, I, I think there's so many lessons in there of, hey, you can be successful and one decision can throw you off track. And if you don't review that decision and say, oh, and check yourself, you could blow up and end up, you know, in an addiction like I did. And one decision can put you right back on track again to, you know, to a whole new uh, path you hadn't even uh, imagined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's powerful. So as, as you're sharing that, I'm thinking two things kind of stand out for me amongst all of the other things. One is kind of the importance of family or, or people that love you being around you to support you. Uh, if you're not blessed with family members, then there's friends. There's, chances are everyone's got people around them that will look out for them to some degree. And it's kind of not being proud to leverage that support when you need it. Uh, that, that, that's a huge one. The, the ability to say, uh, I messed up, you insert any expletive there that you want to, um, I need help, right? To those that uh, you know that you trust enough to ask for that assistance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even if if people may be slightly different scenario, they're not struggling with drugs necessarily, but mm -hmm. they're buried with feeling they have to do everything uh, to keep the business going, and they're not reaching out to people to help them. Then yes, it, it's in it's a different addiction, isn't it? But the consequences can be can be the same, really. Um, I, I Absolutely. I think one of the biggest things I've seen in the folks that, uh, you know, I lend assistance to is, you know, usually they're that entrepreneur and they've come up with the idea and they've started it, you know, bootstrapped it from the ground up. And now they're holding on to everything because well, let's be honest, it's their baby, right? They're like, yeah, this is mine. You're like, no, no, no. Do you like doing accounting? You're like, no, I hate it. Well, then let go of it. Yeah. Hire an accountant. Do the stuff that you're passionate about and, you know, reach out for help for those things that you need help with. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The other takeaway I just was thinking about as you were sharing your story was stay away from the wrong sort of entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got that right. And it's funny um, as it, when I looked back and I think it's a big lesson there is you have to be able to look back at your mistakes the big ones as well as the little ones. And as I look back at that, I think that happened to me because I was trying to fill a void, right? Here I was, I was being successful and doing all the great things, but that wasn't enough. I needed something else. And uh, it was, you know, for me, it was like recognition from outside. And that's usually the time that you can fall prey to, the, you know, sometimes the right person, but quite often the wrong person. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. So maybe then for people that are early in the, the, the path, if you like, of mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, they're, they've either just started or they're thinking about it. What, what would be some of the good practical things to kind of kickstart the business, get some momentum going? I think for me, the first thing when it, when it comes to someone that's, you know, like kickstarting or restarting even um, is to be sure you're going after something you're passionate about. And, and I think, and it's not so because, not so much because, you know, 
hey, of course I'm going to grab something I'm passionate about. But it's really uh, b- because you're going to trip. You're going to fall. You're going to stumble. You're going to bumble. You're going to face plant, right? Um, you're going to meet an obstacle that you're going to look up, you know, and it's like, oh, my God, that's almost insurmountable. But if you're passionate about what it is you're going after, you'll find a way under, over, around, or just bash right through that sucker. So uh, the, the first piece of advice I'd always get is to get clarity on something you're passionate about and where you're going to serve, right? And, and then who you're going to serve. When you find the, 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 those three things, that the triad, you could call it, um, you, you, beca- you can become almost unstoppable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And slightly biased because I'm a coach as well. Clarity. Talk to a coach if you get the chance. That's what I There do. it is. Um, uh, I, I, always, I always tout that. I mean, and it doesn't have to be a coach you pay. I mean, I, when I first started off, um, I had a mentor, you know, and I was lucky enough to be exposed to that in the Coca-Cola organization and a mentor that can take you under wing and teach you things that you're like, oh, my God, I just shaved years off my learning curve by doing that it's it's a great tool yeah i think one of the realizations kind of with life generally but also within sort of building a business is just being honest with yourself that you are going to make mistakes kind of expect it in a kind of healthy way Um, yeah hopefully you don't completely make mistakes all the time because yeah that's not not where you want to go it's a part of life isn't it we're not born entrepreneurs experts of businesses generally well i've never met anyone that is so far so it's it's having enough grace with ourselves that we're going to make mistakes but also Mm -hmm. being smart enough to like you say bring people around you mentors coaches people that will support you and give you an external perspective about yeah two people looking at the same thing are going to look at it differently and sometimes we need that other side uh feed into what we're doing so yeah. Absolutely. I, I like to go with the uh, w- with this saying that it, it's not failure, it's feedback, right? And and for me, coming from a computer background, you know, the more data I can get, the more feedback I can get, the better I can make that computer do what it is I, I want it to do. And I think the same thing is in life. You step out, you do something, and whether you think it's successful or not, you got some feedback. Now you have new data more than you had before you stepped out. So now you can assimilate that into your next step and then hopefully you'll get the the feedback you get you wanted next time. If not, rinse and repeat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, life is, is a journey of tweaking really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right? A degree at a time. That's all it takes. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay, so that that's really helpful. And then what would the next step would then be you've got a good amount of kind of buoyancy momentum going. How would you then kind of shift up? How could you scale up your business? What would be- um, I think when it comes to the scaling piece, it's all about, um, I'll call it uh, connection and communication, right? Um, I, I like to uh, base all of my coaching around what I refer to as the, the six C's of entrepreneurship. So we talked about clarity, all right? The next two that really can help you with scaling and really ramping up from uh, when you first start is connecting with who it is you want to serve. And, and I refer to them as your tribe, right? So you're going to have maybe your your help, whatever it is you're doing helps a thousand people. Well, inside that thousand people, you're going to have, you know, 10 or 20 that are really those raving fans. That's that, that small tribe. Uh, getting and connecting with them and finding out what is maybe what else there is that their needs are. And then even those that aren't in the tribe, if someone comes back to you and says, you know, your program was okay. If it had had this, or if it would have had that, you want to listen to that because that's, that's that feedback again, that you can say, Oh, well, that's really easy for me to incorporate. So, Hey, I'll I'll be happy to add that back in, you know, and then, so, and that obviously becomes that communication, um, you know, to, and it becomes a two-way street, right? You can't just, you know, we can't just run our mouths. We got, you know, two ears and a mouth. And I even go so far as says, you know what? You got two eyes, two ears and a mouth. That's probably the ratio you want to be using it at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. <laughs> now that's good. You've got interested now then. So what are the other three Cs? <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the other three Cs, I mean, 
do my little cheat sheet up here. Uh, the so the fourth C becomes capitalization, right? This is all about you know charging what you're worth. And I think the biggest mistake a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, even seasoned entrepreneurs, make is they try to rush to this fourth C. They haven't made that clarity. They haven't made that communication. They're, they're they're not doing the uh, uh, the connection with their tribe, so you know obviously the capitalization will be very difficult to get to, uh, and then uh, the last two are commitment and cultivation. So really, uh, the commitment is all about you know it's about building that plan of action and holding yourself accountable. And we'll we'll come back again here, like you've mentioned a couple of times, having a coach, a mentor, a guide is definitely a, a big help here because they will help hold your feet to the fire. And then the, the cultivation piece is all about, you know, empowering your beliefs, overcoming your doubt. It, anytime you lean out of your comfort zone, doubt is going to rear its ugly head. So you've got to, you know, cultivate that, that internal belief that you can do uh, what it is you're setting out to do and inspire yourself and motivate yourself forward. Yeah, no, that's really good. I've been jotting those down as you were chatting, actually. Um, yeah, they're, they're nuggets of wisdom there. Which <laughs> I think if we gloss over them, then we devalue them. I think we need time and everyone listening as well, take some time after this to just think through those things. And just kind of rate yourself. Okay, where am I with regards to clarity? Where am I with regards to connecting, you know, uh, capitalizing and, and all the others? I won't go over them all now, but um, yeah, definitely. I think that's um, there's a lot of value in that. So how would you... How would you say we could help with regard? We've kind of touched on mindset to some extent with regard mm -hmm. to how we approach failure, um, how we sort of, yeah, kind of bring clarity or get clarity on, on what we're passionate about. But any other kind of tips with regards to how we can kind of keep the right mindset and make sure that we're not setting ourselves up to fail? Yeah, I think one of the biggest tips when it comes to your mindset is checking the questions that you're asking yourself, right? Um, I think let's use weight loss as a really popular topic uh, and everyone can you know, probably relate to it at some point. You know, why am I so fat? Well, you're, you're so fat because you eat like a pig. I don't know. Whatever. You, if you ask a question like that, you're going to get an answer. Your brain's going to say, well, because you do this or because you do that, you sit around, you watch TV all day long, whatever, whatever the response is. However, you flip that on a script and say, how can I lose weight and enjoy the process? Oh, well, now we have a completely different mindset about uh, the, the exact same task. So yeah. you can do the same thing in your business. It's like, all right, how do I do this part of uh, the business and enjoy it? You know, because like I said, you know, so we all, so many of us have to, from the beginning, bootstrap away. We wear all the hats. We're the accountant. We're the marketer. We're the coach. We're, we're everything uh, until we're able to start, you know, earning the revenue and, and, and piece it out. So how can I do the accounting? You know, I, you know, the one I don't like, right? <laughs> how can I do the accounting and enjoy the process? Yeah. Well, your brain will find a way to tell you, well, maybe you should do this or maybe you should do that. Oh. That's okay. For me, the way I did it is like uh, because I'm such a geek when it comes to uh, systems and programming. Well, if I find the right accounting tool where I enter in the data and it does a lot of the analysis for me and all I got to do is tweak it, then that made it fun for me and that got me into it and until the point where I could step away from it. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So in a lot of ways, what, I th what I'm getting from what you're saying is it's it's perspective is is huge isn't it with regards to how we approach things so yeah can we make the things we need to do fun or how can we make them less less onerous uh, yes and and again i think it comes back to the questions and i think one of the big things is usually our self-talk is far worse than we would let anyone else ever talk to us right yeah. And so if you're asking these, these questions that are driving you to this negative thinking, then you need to flip on it on its ear. And because we're so used to saying it, it's like, well, I don't know what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Um, just, I think if you pause and just wrote down, hey, let's see, what did I ask myself today? Wrote down three or four of those questions and look at them. And you'd be like, oh, oh, well, I know what he's talking about. If I ask this question like that, 
then it, it completely changes how I look at things, changes the perspective. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I know that I don't do it as often as I should, but I know that there's value for me in developing the habit of just at some point in a day, just stopping and saying, right, what have I been thinking about for the last hour? And just yeah. kind of draw, because otherwise you get on a trail of kind of, or a train of thought, I suppose is why they call it that. And you, you just go places, don't you? And, you know, sometimes you end up where you want and other times you kind of think, well, I'm not sure that's really serving me that well. Uh, yeah, and it, it is all that voice inside, isn't it? Um, yeah. And, you know, and I don't say... And I have a coach, uh, a mindset coach that will, will, would possibly disagree with this, but I, I don't say don't go down the rabbit hole, right? It's like, okay, so sometimes you just, let's think this worst case scenario all the way through, all right? So tomorrow I take this action and it fails and I take the next action and it fails. I invest this money and nothing happens. And, you know, at the end of all this and my get, get all the way through all this negative thinking, I, I look at myself and say, well, worst case scenario, I tried all these things and they didn't work but I tried, yeah. right? Okay, now now let's step all the way back and to that first one say, so you tried this first one, well, what if it worked? And then you tried the next one, well, what if it worked? You know, so you, you change the question. Go ahead and go down the rabbit hole for a couple of minutes. Let, let it out. Um, I'm a big fan of go ahead and feel your emotions. They're your emotions. Yeah. You have a right to feel them, but then step, step back and say, okay, now, what if this happened? How could I make it go this way? How could I do that? What if it actually worked? Now go down that rabbit hole. I think that's the step that a lot of people don't do. All right, I've gone, I've gone down the dark hole. Let's go to the light side and see how that feels. Oh, well, that's just as awesome, right? So it's uh, either, either one could happen. Usually your worst case scenario won't happen. It'll be somewhere in between. And once you accept that, then it's a, it's a much better, more productive way of thinking. Yeah, 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 and it's. I like the way you say it because it is like to choose to go down the rabbit hole is you've already got to that level of self awareness that you realize that's what it is. So you're mm -hmm. aware of what you're thinking and you're intentional about exploring that avenue with the view that you can come back and, yeah, go down a different way if you need to. Absolutely. Uh, that's powerful. Do you have any kind of sort of personal techniques that you use that, that helps keep your mindset? on on track the reason why i ask is for me like over the different interviews we talk to our different guests about mindsets um a because it's huge uh, it affects us every day but also mm -hmm. from my experience it's like you can't master it once and then live off the benefit can you it, it's an ongoing kind of regular what am i thinking how am i doing how is it serving me just a review every now and again um do you have any kind of how do you Check yourself. <laughs> um, two big ways. One is if I find myself uh, going towards the, you know, the angry side, then the negative side, the doubtful side, it's literally going, okay, all right, why am I thinking this? And again, like I said, it's, uh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and feel these emotions for a couple of minutes here. Acknowledge the fact that I'm, I'm mad, I'm doubtful, I'm, I'm whatever this negative emotion is now. How can it, you know, what is it that sparked it and how can I steer it back the other way? And so, sometimes you're, you're like, I, I just don't know. I, I just woke up mad, you know? Okay, well, that happens. For me, the other thing that I do is I'm a big music guy. I'm a mood music guy. So there are different types of music. I have some, I listen to you know, everything from ABBA to Zappa, from, you know, from Five Finger Death Punch to Kiss to Metallica and Michael Jackson and Tupac. And they all have a different mood for me. So if I'm looking to push myself into a certain mood and I can't do it through that, you know, the, in the inner reflection, Reflection. I'll flip on some music. Ah, now I need to be inspired. Well, let's drop some Queen on, and you know, let's listen to some jazz or whatever it is that inspires you to help take you back to a moment when you first heard that song. You're like, ah, now I feel that energy. Now, with that review, that renewed uh, um, perspective, you can go back and review that question, and that usually fixes it for me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like building a conscious environment around you that supports where you want to go, isn't it? 
Yeah, and you, but you have to be intentional about it. I mean, if you just, like you said, if you just let yourself go down that rabbit hole, it gets harder and harder to get out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One of the the guys that has been my mentor for many years, John Maxwell, um, he talks about having nourish centers that you set up consciously at some point, like you say, music or quotes or something mm-hmm. that inspires you and kind of feeds feeds whatever it is you know you're giving out on a daily basis you need to draw strength from something and it's like have them close at hand have the the tracks on the playlist um that you can just yep. change your your focus back so yeah that's great advice um as well very practical as well what i like about this everything i'm hearing is stuff that the listeners can kind of put in straight away can kind of develop habits about building these things into their lives if they're not already doing them and i would say probably if they're like me some of this I've heard before and I've started and I've stopped and other bits I'm better at kind of keeping going and some of this mm-hmm. stuff which I'm going to kind of add into the mix of how I travel on the journey that I'm on and how I recognize what the journey would be more so now this is, this is really good. I, I think one of the cool things about uh, about personal development and, and, and learning things like this is um, especially in a, in a format like this, or even in a book, or however you however you absorb these things, is today you'll glean nugget A. Oh wow, wow. he said this. I'm I'm going to try that, and you put that into your life, and then you come back to it a month, a year, two years from now, and you re-listen or you reread the exact same book. You'll find nugget B or nugget C. Uh, so I would highly recommend anyone who's listening now to. Hey, I'm gonna go back and reread this book, or I'm gonna come back to this show, or I'm gonna go back to some of the earlier episodes of the show you're listening to now and see what I what new thing I hear in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's like when the student's ready, the teacher appears, isn't it? That's uh, right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I know from experience. I've done that. I've listened to a message and thought, "How come I never caught that before?" Uh, right. <laughs> he didn't say that last time, did he? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. I know what you mean. I the way I look at it is if I listen to something for twenty minutes, half an hour, if I get one thing that really resonates, then that's mm-hmm. a good investment. If I try and get twelve things, it all goes a bit kind of yeah, you, and you won't do any of them at that point. Yeah. If you get that one, you're like, Okay, good, I'm gonna try that. Yeah. If you try and get twelve, it becomes a tick box exercise. You yeah. put it on a sheet of paper, it goes in you know, filed away somewhere and you never look at it again. Yeah. Which, you know, it doesn't serve anyone, does it really? But yeah, you get one thing that you can work on, grab it, run with it. And then the next thing happens. And and I think you can, you could actually pivot that to all your entrepreneurs that are out there is that they, when they start, they usually have that one thing. Oh, here's, here's what I'm trying to accomplish. Here's how I'm going to serve my audience. And as they start going down that path, the shiny object syndrome, appears right like oh what about youtube oh no wait a minute facebook lives oh no wait a minute tiktok you know and all of a sudden they're that one thing has become 12 things and none of them are getting done and if they are they're not getting done very well where it's like okay i'm going to stay focused and i'm going to i'm going to get really good on this platform whatever this platform is podcasting facebook lives and once i know that is you know up and running and humming well, then I'm going to try over here or over there, or I'm going to hire someone to take the content from platform A, and they're going to use their expertise to, um, you know, percolate it out to the rest of the platforms. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because you you dilute your energy otherwise, don't you? And you're affected. Right. Yeah. Do you have any kind of tips just on that, really? Um, because funny, as you were saying, I was thinking of different social media platforms. Um, how how can people find kind of where their audience is and where they use? Do you have any kind of tips on that? Or? It really, I and for me, it's usually where you're at is probably where your audience is at. Because for me, um, I, and, and the folks I try to work with, you're usually trying to serve the person you were yesterday or last year, uh, because you're just a little bit ahead of them in their journey. Um, And so they're a lot easier to find because they're where you're at. Um, Now, I say that, and there's a slight deviation of that, because I mean, a lot of the folks that I serve 
are on LinkedIn. And I was just kind of inactive on LinkedIn for the longest time and, you know, started hyping it up over the you know, past couple of years. And I'm finding them there as well. So, you know, there's that, you know, you got to look for where you're at. And then you can start again, this comes back to the, the communication, right? Where else are you? Where do you spend most of your time engaging at and, and they'll tell you, they'll, they're happy to tell you. But, you know, if you're doing B2B, obviously it's more of a LinkedIn focus. Um, if you're doing kind of, uh, you know, uh, a more younger crowd, it could be whatever the new platform is, right? Most of them, they're off Facebook. You know, they're there, they check Facebook, but they're not spending all that time. You know, they're, they're off on Snapchat or there's some new one my daughter was just telling me about I hadn't even heard of yet. Like, I didn't, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and there are tools out there that you could utilize to see what some of the demographics are for the active folks from age group to, uh, you know, to, um, you know, uh, psychological profiles. And yeah, yeah, no, that's really good. Yeah, it, it's it's the long journey, isn't it? Like a business is it's more like a tree, isn't it? It's it's the marathon, it's not the sprint. And it's if you don't have to do everything at once, uh, yeah, the best approach, isn't it? You start, you build gradually. Because I know one of the things you kind of um, you've learned is consistency, the power of consistency as well. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which platform you're on. If you're if you're there consistently i hey i'm here monday wednesday and friday or every day whatever your plan is they'll come to expect it and they'll come find you and they'll hang out with you uh and vibe back and forth and then you know say hey sometimes they'll go reach out to you and say well why aren't you on linkedin or why aren't you on tiktok or why aren't you on this or that and again you know listening right so that you can uh, get where they want to be yeah yeah the more you can relate to your audience yeah. yeah, you can glean just, yeah, when they listen to you, where do, where else do they listen, isn't it? Who are the other people they're following? And yeah, Absolutely. There's, there's clues, isn't there? If, if we're smart enough to listen um, and to be open to feedback, there are clues that can kind of help us in that. So, Absolutely. That's really good. That's really good. We're kind of almost coming to the end of our time together, but I've just yeah. kind of wanted to give you the opportunity to talk about your website a little bit. Is that the best way for people to touch base with you? Um, Absolutely. Um, the dark horse, uh, dark horse schooling dot com, uh, like you mentioned earlier, um, I, I try to get that up to date. All the podcast episodes will be there. I really highlight the interview episodes more so because uh, for me, I think it's awesome. Like we're doing right here. You know, I learn from you. You learn from me. And I want to share that with the audience. And then, of course, we do the uh, the daily episodes Monday on Tuesday through Friday. There's the coaching. You know, if there anyone's interested in coaching, I know you're a big fan of coaching as well. There's a tab to reach out to me for your uh, to re reflect that interest. And across the top are all the socials. So if you really vibe on uh, on Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever it is, I'm there. Um, you'll catch me a lot uh, doing lives on Facebook almost every day. And then I'm active on LinkedIn, checking messages and what have you. So uh, yeah, through the website, you'll catch me on any one of those places. Okay. No, that's really good. And just share with us briefly, like what got you into the coaching side of things? I'm, I'm kind of curious. I know the value of coaching from my own experience as well, but just, yeah. Like For you know, me, it started back in my Coca-Cola days. Like I mentioned earlier, I got that mentor and really it shaved years off my learning curve and um, in my ability to climb the ranks within uh, corporate America. And then I started being a mentor and it, it's almost self-serving because I felt so good in being able to help someone else level up in their, you know, corporate America journey that I took that outside of the corporate America field because I was doing all the personal development stuff and started coaching outside uh, of the Coca-Cola company. And I, like I said, it's, it's almost because I get so much out of it watching someone else, you know, really develop up into who they were probably destined to become anyway. Uh, I just, I get to say I helped shine the apple. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it is huge. I, like I would say, I know from my own experience, I've not always been in the right position that I'm ready for a coach. I think there are mm -hmm. seasons that 
you know, you get prepared to the point where actually now coaching is, it's come up on my radar. I'm sort of interacting with coaches or I'm hearing about coaching more. Then it becomes more of a kind of option. Um, so it's not necessarily for everyone straight away. But sure. there's such benefit in just having that time aside, digging into stuff and kind of just, yeah, discovering things that are holding you back that unless you get some outside input sometimes those things stay hidden i think um, you know and, and i think one of the cool opportunities uh, you know even if you're if you're on the fence like ah oh, do i need a coach or not there are group coaching opportunities a- as well so maybe now you're not learning just from the coach that you're engaged with but the rest of the people that are um, in the same group which is hugely beneficial and if you're really still on the fence about that the connections pay for them themselves the coaching the cost of the coaching uh, gets you in a room with a bunch of other folks at your level or above i mean that's worth the value that's worth the price of entry right there yeah definitely yeah i'm going to mention before we round off today um about your case mastermind coming up but before i do you run masterminds as well don't you are you running any at the moment or i i, I am not right now i'm currently focused on a, a new digital product we're about ready to release uh which is really a uh, how to create your own digital course course sounds kind of funny when you say it but really so many uh, entrepreneurs they have this amazing knowledge in their head and especially coaches right they they have a process that they take people through to help them you know be uh, all they can be but they do that a lot one on one so if they could take that knowledge put it into a course and then sell that course well then that can help them level up their uh, and scale their business because now they're sending people through that course getting that baseline and those some of those people will raise their hand and say i really want more from you right and now you're saying okay well i don't have to reteach you all that stuff because i know you went through it already yeah. you know so now you can take that you can start them at level 15 rather than level two yeah, yeah. that sounds really good because also you've captured it kind of through the course so people can revisit it easily um, absolutely and you can reach more people uh, at the same time so yeah no that sounds good maybe we should get you back um when things are up and running and you kind of got time as well we'll, we'll look at try and get you back to um tell us more about that because um, that'd be awesome sounds really interesting thank you for everything you shared um i've made lots of notes and i've learned stuff um which is a, a, a nice byproduct of being able to chat to experts as well absolutely. Um, i know that everyone listening um, even if they're at the gym and they're on the treadmill right now, I'm sure something's gone in. Um, and if not, you need to definitely listen to this again because there's so much packed within here that you can just unpack slowly and just build into your life habits, changes to the way you think uh, so much. So, yeah, thanks, Tracy. I really appreciate all, everything that you shared with us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Oh, you're welcome. Definitely look forward to you coming back as well. So that's that's everything from from us today other than just to, as i mentioned there i wanted to mention your guys lifestyle mastermind group which is actually available now for registration so what is it just in a nutshell your guys brought together lots of different experts from the different fields uh, and the main focus is covering the four four key areas of life uh, happiness and the lifestyle that you have your relationships your health and your finances and it's kind of spread throughout the year so it's not like really intense you can work through it group by group week by week uh, anyway there's there's a link below with a promo code so if you want to save some money use the the link and the promo code um, and it'll be a real benefit also i would definitely recommend that you listen to trace's podcast as well lots of wisdom over the years that he's gleaned so yeah there's there's some smart things that we can learn from smart people uh that's the the easiest way to navigate through life i think as we are so um yeah definitely avail yourself of that um and also following him on twitter youtube and everywhere 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 that he is um that would be amazing so i'm going to sign off for now thanks everyone for listening thanks again tracy for your time and um as i leave you today i just want to encourage you to stay positive and stay being proactive. Okay, until next time, goodbye.
Thank you for listening to Yukai Business Show. We will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts. Want more? Check out www.yukaibusinessshow.com. Get your free trial of our virtual assistance service today. Just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Quote W O S 1 8 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. 